In this lesson, you'll learn about shift keying. Shift keying is the term used for the modulation of digital data. There are four main types of keying. On-off keying, amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying. Let's take a look at each. These days, most of the data we communicate wirelessly start off as digital data, a stream of binary ones and zeros. Inside a computer, binary digits, also known as bits, are represented by electrical pulses, which, when shown on a graph of voltage against time, result in this familiar square wave visualization that most students of computer science would recognize. When the voltage is relatively high, we have a one. When it's low, we have a zero. Each of these two possible states is known as a symbol, and a stream of symbols is referred to as the baseband signal. Before the baseband signal can be transmitted via radio, it must be modulated. It needs to be converted into a form that can be radiated by an antenna. It also has to fall within a particular frequency range in order to comply with the law. The simplest way to achieve this is with on-off keying, or OOK for short. This involves a continuous wave carrier which is generated within the transmitter. Then, one symbol at a time, the data are encoded on the carrier by simply turning it on and off with little more than a switch, rather like Marconi did in 1897. Another way to encode binary data on the carrier wave is with amplitude shift keying, or ASK for short. With amplitude shift keying, the digital signal is multiplied by the carrier. Whenever there's a drop in the voltage of the digital signal, which never quite falls to zero, there's a drop in the amplitude of the carrier. When the voltage of the digital signal increases, so does the amplitude of the carrier. As with on-off keying, the modulated signal is now in one of only two possible states. When the amplitude of the signal is relatively high, it's carrying a 1. When it's relatively low, it's carrying a 0. The rate at which the modulated signal changes from one state to another is the same as the symbol rate. One after another, each waveform is converted into radio energy by the antenna and it's propagated through space. At the receiving end, the incoming signal is sampled at the symbol rate and the amplitude of each sample is used to determine whether it represents a 1 or a 0. The number of bits transmitted per second is known as the baud rate. The simple implementation of amplitude shift keying that you can see here has a baud rate that is equivalent to the symbol rate. The principle of amplitude shift keying can be taken a stage further. Rather than only two possible waveforms in the modulated signal, there could be four, each with a different amplitude. Each waveform could then represent a combination of two bits. With two bits per symbol, the baud rate would be doubled, so twice as much data could be transmitted in the same amount of time. Theoretically, there could be even more waveforms in the modulated signal, each with a different amplitude. Eight possible amplitudes, for example, would allow the transmission of three bits at once. There is, however, a downside to scaling up the baud rate like this. The receiver has to be able to distinguish one waveform from another, and the more of them there are, the closer their amplitudes will be. Amplitude shift keying is already susceptible to amplitude variations due to external interference, so a high baud rate could make matters much worse. Nevertheless, ASK and OOK are commonly used in short-range wireless applications in the home to control things such as lighting, heating and kitchen appliances. ASK is also used to transmit digital data via fibre optic cables. An alternative way to communicate digital data via radio is with frequency shift keying, FSK. 
As with amplitude shift keying, a continuous wave carrier is generated and modified according to the digital signal. But with frequency shift keying, a 1 is represented by a relatively high frequency in the modulated wave and a 0 by a lower frequency. Frequency shift keying is less susceptible to interference because interference tends to affect amplitude rather than frequency. The obvious downside, however, is the increased bandwidth of an FSK signal. Perhaps the most important development in the communication of digital data via radio has been phase shift keying, also known as binary phase shift keying, or BPSK for short. Before the carrier is modulated, the baseband signal is modified such that a 1 is now represented by a positive voltage and a 0 is represented by a negative voltage. Preparing the baseband signal like this is called line coding, and there are various ways it can be done, as you'll see later. This particular line coding scheme has resulted in what is known as a polar non-return to zero baseband signal. One symbol after another, the square wave is multiplied by the carrier, as is the case with amplitude modulation. But because the modulating signal is an NRZ signal, the carrier is inverted whenever there's a change from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. This is effectively a phase change. A swing from 0 to 1 in the baseband signal results in a positive phase shift in the carrier of 180 degrees, and a swing from 1 to 0 results in a negative phase shift of 180 degrees. At the receiver, the modulated wave is converted back into binary digits. The receiver does this by comparing the phase of the received signal with a locally generated reference signal, which is identical to the original carrier. The incoming signal is sampled at the symbol rate, and if the received signal is in phase with the reference signal, it's decoded as a binary zero. If it's 180 degrees out of phase, it's decoded as a binary one. Needless to say, timing and synchronization are an important aspect of what's going on inside the receiver. BPSK has been around since the 1990s when Wi-Fi standards were first established and is still supported by most Wi-Fi enabled devices these days, albeit with pulse shaping applied to the baseband signal first. In the next lesson, we'll take a closer look at pulse shaping.